So today we're talking about water pumps. What we need them to be able to move water around our aquaponics system, but the question is always how big do I need them to be? And I've got two here for you. One is this one, which moves around uh, 9,000 litres an hour. And this one, which from memory was something along the lines of 650 litres per hour. Two totally different sized pumps, but then I have different sized aquaponic systems. All of the pumps have a couple of basic things um, in common. So I'll move around. So this is just a small little pump, whoopsie, that I'm using for my little barrel aquaponic system. It's all nice and wet because I just pulled it out. So they all have a guard. We take it off. And sometimes, I'll just point out, this particular pump allows me to adjust the flow rate. It has that at the very uh, front of the pump. I can have that in different places in the pump if it has it. Now these are submersible pumps, so they're in the water and generally fairly quiet. So we're getting in here and then in this pump, I'm lifting it up, opening, we have the propeller. This is, uh, I can't remember what exactly this part's called, but this is what the propeller itself sits into and what causes the propeller to spin. The propeller is magnetic. So in here, which is where the propeller lives, we need to make sure that every month we're pulling this out and actually giving it a clean. Otherwise, this magnetic part gets covered in gunk, for want of a better word, solid waste, algae, or all of that sort of stuff. It gets clogged up. And if it gets clogged up, then the, the magnet won't turn and it won't turn around. So this is a standard thing that every month we actually need to pull it apart and clean. It's very, very simple, but every pump is slightly different. So that's that one. The bigger pump is for a bigger system that I had built, and it has a stand on it, which we take the stand off. Again, we're taking off the cover, it comes off nice and easy. This also comes with like a 20 meter extension cord, how awesome. And again, we needed to get to the propeller, so in this particular pump, we twist off, and the propeller uh, is an awful lot bigger. Yeah, an awful lot bigger. Needs a bit of a clean, it's an old pump, it's actually one that doesn't work anymore, it has been nicely retired, but I keep it as an absolute backup, but I really should give it a clean. In this case, it has an O-ring on it, so we want to make sure that we don't damage that. One thing you'll notice with the bigger pumps, that white thing that I was telling you that was attached to the propeller, that white thing, white thing, white thing, white, <laughs> um, that's what it is, and you can see it holds the propeller in its, in its place. On the bigger pumps, it doesn't pull out easily. In my aquarium filters inside, though, it does. So every pump is different. So this, on the inside in here, we need to make sure that every month we're giving it a good clean. And then you put it back how it should be. Let's flush up against that. We twist this part back on here, which I will give it a very good clean before I actually put it away. Oops. Um, and it helps if you put it in the right direction. which I'm having trouble doing. That's okay. I just wanted to put it back together because I like being neat. The question is though, Candy, which, which pump am I going to use? Do I need a 9,000 litre pump for my aquaponics system? That depends on the size of your system. This little one back here, it only needs a, a pump that's 3,000 litres an hour. Ideally, you want the water to flow through your pump and through your grow bed. Remember, that's your big filter between one to th one to three, no, maybe that was one to three times per hour. A minimum of once an hour, ideally three times an hour. Now, in aquariums, so just your indoor aquariums, they generally recommend that the water goes through the filter five times an hour. In aquaculture, because we're having a lot more fish, it's recommended five times an hour or up to seven times an hour having that water going through the filter. But in aquaponics, we don't want to have such high stocking levels stocking density, biomass, all of those were basically simplified. We don't want to have that many fish in our system that we're putting pressure on our system. 
We want to make sure that our fish are happy, healthy and safe and so that we make sure that the water is pumping through the, the um, where the bacteria is, so that's the grow bed, at least once an hour, ideally two, two times an hour, two to three times an hour is the best, best flow to keep your water quality under control. If you're running different systems, you might want to go a little bit slower. That's something that is an individual, you'll find the flow of your system. This does take a bit of time. No more than three times an hour, but ideally between one to three. So what you do to work that out is you calculate how big is my system? All of the water components, so how much water is in the grow bed? How much water is in the fish tank? If you have a solid separator like I do, how much water is in there? You're wanting that whole amount of water to cycle through your system between one to three times per hour. And that's how you calculate what size pump you need. They'll always tell you one the watts, very important to know. And by the way, this little one from my little barrel aquaponic system costs the same amount as keeping a light on. Um, whereas this bigger pump was 45 watts per hour. That's pretty damn good, just saying. If you've got a pump that is not submersible, you will still need to work out how many litres per hour um, it runs and how big your system is. It's the same type of thing, but it's just it might be set up a bit different. These ones are designed to be completely in water all the time. If you do have like that happening, make sure that there's a heat. Um, they can be heat protected and things like that to make sure that if, if, the, if it overheats that it will shut off. You want to make sure that all these things happen. That's why comparing your pumps is a good thing. I, I tend to stick with the same brands because I like them. Um, generally the pump says that they've got a 12-month warranty, always have a backup. Even if it's meant to last for 12 months, if it doesn't, you don't want to be stuck and not have a backup, not have something running to keep this water going through the pumps, because I guarantee you, you don't have a pump, then, or if you don't have a backup pump, five o'clock on a Friday afternoon and it just dies. So having, having something there as a backup, even if it's a brand new pump, I bought a brand new pump, for this, little, for this little aquaponic system, and three weeks later, the pump, brand new, just didn't want to turn on. I cleaned it, it was nothing wrong with it, but I could not get the thing to work. I had a backup, I was able to put that in and get, the, get a new one. If I didn't have that backup, I would have been pretty stuck because I had a whole heap of fish in there. We don't want to overload our system. We want to make sure that, ideally, a submersible pump for a smaller system and get one that's going to go and have the water flowing through between one to three times per hour. That is the that is the principle behind your pumps. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or comments, make sure you do leave them below, and hit that subscribe button so you can find out when I've got more videos being posted. And don't forget to follow me on other social media because I do different lives on different social media on different days. So, again, thank you for watching. I really value and appreciate your time and I hope you enjoy it.